Okay, this is the how-to uh, video on how to draw number two of lesson 2.1 isometric sketching. Um, anytime you have an inclined line or an inclined surface, as you see right here, you're always going to want to try to start to draw your x-axis and y-axis lines first. So this would be the x-axis, this would be the y-axis. So what we want to do is we want to start out trying to find the best place to start the drawing. And the best place to start the drawing is always try to find the corner of the part. So for instance, the bottom right-hand corner of the part in this instance would be this square down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw that square somewhere towards the bottom right-hand area of our isometric grid over here. And the best place to start would be to go ahead and start drawing this right here, this shape right here. So we'll start out with that square. From there, we want to take a look and take a look at the uh, points we have. Remember, a point's just a location in space. So we're trying to find the corner where we can start from. So this corner right here is the exact same as this corner right over here. So what we do is we want to go back a distance of three squares. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to go back a distance of three squares. And then that's going to bring me back right along this line. From there, I'm at this point right here. I can go up one, two, three, and it looks like just past three. Now, when you're drawing vertical in an isometric sketch, your boxes are defined by these little intersection points as you count up. So one, two, three, and I'm going to go barely above that one. So that's the same thing as going one, two, three, and up above that one over here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a line like this. That should allow us now to create two points that we want to connect. So remember, a diagonal line represents motion. That's probably where your eye is going to want to go to first. Most of the time, people want to draw the diagonal lines first because that's where your eye went to first. It's the first thing that catches your eye because it represents motion. What we can do now is we can go and just connect those two points like that. And we now have that little side edge of this. We wanted to draw our vertical and horizontal lines first. Note that in an isometric sketch, there is never any horizontal lines. You'll never draw a line left to right like that. You only have vertical and angled lines. Remember, an isometric, isometric means equal measure. So that's what we have here. From this point right here, we're the same way right here. We're going to come back to, so we're just going to come over to this. And again, we can count up from here. One, two, three, and again, just past three. So again, I'm going to count straight up. Point, there's two. There's three, and just barely up past it. I'm going to draw a vertical line just like that. And then I can connect this over. And I'm, what I'm starting to do is I'm basically drawing shapes. I draw this little triangular shape. I draw this rectangular shape. And it's going to sl slowly start turning into a form that you'll see up here. So now from here, we can go back. One, two, three. So I'm going to count back three. And draw right here. And then from there, over here, we'll go up four. One, two, three, four. like that. From the side, here I'm going to count back two, so I go one, two. So from here, I'm going to go one, two. Sometimes when people draw these, when they when I, they think of coming back to this way, they'll start counting across. You will never ever ca count across, let's say, this little diamond shape here. You only count up when going vertically from one point, so you'll never go across as a, as a horizontal line. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and play connect the dots here. Notice how the diagonal lines are what gets drawn last in that shape. Just play connect the dots on the diagonal line and things will be easier for you. Let's go ahead and count from the back back here. So we're back here at this point. I got one, two, three across here. There's three. Same thing from this corner right here. We got three across. Two across the back back here. So I'm going to draw myself two across. And I can go ahead and just play connect the dots there at the end. Just like that. My original pencil, I, this orange pencil, uh, the lead was kind of starting to break once I started it. So I'm going to cut this off here. And there is your shape redrawn the same as you see on the side. Now remember, there's two different types of shading we can apply to this. We can apply tonal shading. And tonal shading could be full-blown coloring it in. You know, you could sit here and take a few minutes and actually color it in. Or tonal shading can also just be parallel lines that are diagonal, kind of like this. But you want to make sure that you do the same shading for each face. So as we're looking this way, I want the same shading on this to be the same shading on that. 
So if we're going to go, let's say, looking from the side of the object or down, let's do down from the object, you can do something called stipple shading, which is just dots like this. And that helps bring out those faces. See how that kind of brings out the faces that we leave completely blank and totally white? That brings out those faces. So that is how to draw number two for lesson 2.1.